Hello everybody! My dating videos are by far my most requested so I'm literally digging into my trauma today to regale you with this tale of the most sweet and cute and well thought out date I've ever been on but it was also the most humiliating and heartbreaking date I've ever been on <sighs> Okay, so let's go About seven years ago, I guess in Japan, I was using Tinder and online dating, mostly just for fun. And then uh, I remember at that time because I remember there was a phase where all the girls wore like the dog filter, dog face filter. It was that time. And I wouldn't say I was catfished, but I went on a lot of dates and I met the guy and he didn't look like his picture at all. Like it would be like a 10 year old picture or... Um, just like a really far away angle, like a very good angle. So when you met them, usually they didn't look like their picture, which kind of sucked. So um, I was talking with this guy and he honestly looked very, very handsome. And I didn't really expect him to look like that in person. And anyways, we were chatting for a bit uh, before we decided to meet up and his English seemed very, very good. And uh, he didn't really mention anything about himself apart from he worked in a university and that he lived in Roppongi. So we decided to meet up in Roppongi close to where he lived and he could show me around. And um, it was supposed to be like a yukata date, but I actually, I forget what happened. I think I woke up late and I didn't put my yukata on. But he was wearing his and I thought that was really thoughtful that he was actually wearing a yukata because I thought he wouldn't be. Um, the first thing I noticed was that he did look exactly like his picture and even actually he was maybe more handsome in person. He was honestly like a very good looking guy. And um, it was in the heat of summer and Japanese summer is like very humid and sticky and moist. So that kind of sucked. It was very, very hot that day. But anyways, we met up. Uh, he seemed really nice. We didn't really chat that much at first because uh, it's kind of awkward and then we went to a museum I thought it was also very nice that he requested like a museum date because usually guys kind of just uh they're like let's go to an izakaya or like a cafe or they don't really put like a lot of effort into it but he clearly decided like he, he it was well thought out he thought of something fun that we could do and we went to um Roppongi Mori Tower which is a art museum and it has like a bunch of stuff there and it was honestly really nice uh walking around and talking about art with someone and um after that we went to a cafe and we just chatted the only thing at first that I noticed was that his English wasn't as good as it was when he was mailing me and I think that's like some people are just better at mailing in English or written English um, and like I wasn't sure if he understood completely everything I was saying because like some things he said were like kind of non-committal and I sometimes he seemed like he wasn't 100% there but overall like it wasn't bad um, so yeah I was honestly ready to go home at that point because it was like early afternoon but he convinced me that there was this really nice izakaya around the corner and um yeah we went there so anyways this izakaya was amazing I don't know how to describe it apart from it was like summer themed and when you walk inside and you're seated at the windowsill and then you sit and you're served food on the windowsill but then your legs dangle in the outside of the building <laughs> and uh, you can feel like the cool summer wind through your tires and look out across a Roppongi it was just really really nice and um, we were just chatting and I think we were chatting for like hours and just like drinking a little bit and eating it was very very nice um, he said that he really really liked me and that like he really saw a future dating me <laughs> and then um he said he was going back to Kobe the next week to meet his parents and he asked me if I'd want to go with him and like I think like in any country visiting someone's parents um is such a big deal in dating but particularly in Japan and Asia it's honestly it's a really big deal so I thought at that point that he was at least a little bit serious about me 
And honestly, I'm just really excited to go to Kobe. Like, I've always wanted to go to Kobe, and even at this time, years later, I still haven't gone to Kobe. Yeah, the Ezekai was really nice. It was still like early evening when we finished, so he asked if I wanted to go see his apartment. Usually that's kind of a red flag and I don't want, obviously you shouldn't do that because it can be dangerous But he seemed really really nice and he was genuinely excited to show me and it didn't seem like he was going to do something like hentai and weird So I agreed to go And um It was such a big surprise His apartment was in like a really tall building, maybe on the 15th floor In central Roppongi It was huge and like incredibly well decorated there was like a balcony garden with like hammocks and like comfy cushions it was honestly incredible i've never seen anything like it in tokyo and i realized at that point he must have been so rich and one good thing was um at the cafe in the isakaya like he never talked about how much money he made or that he was rich so that for me was honestly such a green flag that he clearly had money but didn't really brag about it and um as soon as we arrived, he kind of like swept me into the living room and he had like a wall projector which was projecting like like music videos of like soft pop music and um, he went to the kitchen and he cut me like some peaches and in Japan fruit's quite expensive and particularly peaches and these ones you could tell were really expensive and we were eating like peaches and drinking brandy and uh, it was just such a nice experience and like we sat on the hammock outside and we're just looking down because you could see the whole of Roppongi then after that it was starting to get a little bit late so I decided to go home and we obviously agreed that we would meet very very soon and that we liked each other and um, that I would go to meet his parents the next week in Kobe and yeah, so I left and I went to take the train. The train, the Roppongi station was only like 20 minutes from my old place that I lived at. So, you know, it wasn't that far from me. And the whole time I was mailing my roommate because at that time I was living with another girl and uh, I was gushing about this guy. Like I had such an amazing, thoughtful date. I can't believe it. I've never been on a date like that in Japan before. Um, he's so nice. Like I don't want to get my hopes up, but I really think like maybe there could be a future with him and like stuff like that. So embarrassing. <laughs> and then mm, I sent the picture from today of me and him together. And, um, I think I fell asleep on the train even though it was just like 20 minutes because honestly I had been drinking brandy and eating a lot of like rich izakaya food but then I got home and I walked in and I saw I still remember my roommate was sitting on the floor texting like this and then she turned around and I noticed immediately that she had something she wanted to tell me but wasn't sure if she should tell me or not because we knew each other pretty well and um yeah, it turns out that, oh, she said, uh, isn't this the guy that you just went on a date with? And she showed me his picture, and it was his Tinder profile, and I said, yeah, that's him. It turns out that as soon as we split from the date, and I guess uh, as I was walking to the station, or as I was on the train, he mailed her on Tinder, saying something like, oh, you're so sexy, let's go on a date, or something like that. And honestly, I was mortified, like it's so embarrassing, I was just like talking about how this guy was so nice And literally like, he didn't even wait, like as soon as we split, he immediately, immediately started mailing other girls, clearly And by some twist of fate, he mailed my roommate so embarrassing and like the thing is it's like he cl like clearly he was probably mailing a lot of girls um like here's the thing because i know that like we weren't really technically dating we'd only met each other one time but if it had been like the next day or the day after i don't think i would have been so mad but like imagine like you've just gone on a date where you told someone you really liked them and you immediately started mailing girls afterwards that's a huge red flag it makes me feel like you're like a date addict or something then like I explained the date and everything else and it just hit me then 
you know, like the museum, the cafe, uh, the izakaya, the peaches, the projector, everything. It was almost robotic, like it, it was smooth. It was almost too good. And I realized that probably he's done this date like a hundred times. Like it was just like a process for him. And that made me really sad because like the whole time I was having such a good time and I didn't even think that like this is probably something he's done like a million times before. Because like I even know guys in Japan that have kind of like, like their hobby is dating and like I know guys that their hobby is taking girls to Disneyland. So they'll like find a girl tell them they like them, take them to Disneyland, and then ghost them and do the process over and over again. I'm not sure why they do this. I don't know like exactly if it's like the thrill of the chase or if it's like an insecurity thing. I'm not sure at all, like a fear of commitment, but this is definitely something that happens and something that I've encountered quite a lot. So um, my roommate mailed him and said something mean and I mailed him and said I don't want to speak or see you ever again and he tried to cover it like oh no like I'm really interested in you but um I just wanted I just wanted to make friends or blah 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 some bullshit I don't even remember it and honestly I just blocked him because zero time of day for that like once you've been dating long enough you know that there's no point in wasting time like for this split second I had such a lovely time I really considered giving him another chance but I'm so glad that I didn't because like it was so humiliating and clearly he didn't care about me if the moment we left he was already meeting other girls so there it is so what do we take away from this story try not to get your hopes up too much but then again I wouldn't say don't have hope at all because honestly dating particularly in Japan can be such a shit show and like it's just like a lot of weird experiences or a lot of like because like you you're in a new culture and it's often harder to pick up red flags and nuances so it takes a little bit of getting used to but I promise you if you keep going you don't give up it is so worth it so yeah <laughs> tell me how you personally would react to this date because honestly I was just mad about it at that time or just angry but also very tired and jaded so I just blocked him and tried to pull it from my mind I honestly didn't really think about it for years I don't know randomly I just thought about it like I can look back on it now and laugh because it's honestly ridiculous <laughs> but at the time I didn't find it that funny so anyways um, thank you for watching and as always, please subscribe. Oh, and one more thing, like I wasn't paid to promote these or anything, but this brand called Hello Slippers sent me a bunch of slippers and they're honestly so cute. Look at these. They're so cute, right? And I just love them. I don't know. I just love anything with cows on and I don't know. I'm just happy about it. I wanted to tell someone.